Hey, Ethan, uh, Andy Greeter with the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Uh, obviously, you had some other schools interested in you, and PJ talked about kind of the recruiting process on signing day. What what brought you to Minnesota? Um, you know, just the culture, um, everything that Coach Fleck, the uh, the program, and the staff here stands for. Um, I felt aligns and resonates with my values, my morals. Um, personally, just hard work, dedication, and just trying to make yourself better every day. Um, all things that I take pride in, and just seeing that alignment um, was very nice for me. How much did the conversation with Nick Monroe, someone you've known a long time, play a part in your decision? Um, that was definitely a, a key part of the decision as well. Um, just always having a relationship with the people that are going to interact with you every day was important for me as well. Um, just knowing what type of uh, guy, what type of man you're going to deal with on an uh, everyday basis. So that was also key as well. Ethan, for those who haven't watched you play, how would you describe your, your style of play and things that you pride yourself on? Um, physical, tough. Um, I like to make plays on the ball, get the ball out the air. Um, turnovers are a big part of the game, and I, I really take pride in that. Um, yeah, just physical, tough, and take the ball out the air when I can. For Ja and Danny, how was it working with Coach Winston in year one, and how do you think it'll go even further in year two, just knowing how detailed his work is and whatnot? Uh, he's definitely not a complacent guy. Um, you know, he, he saw a lot of development out of our room last year and wants to see you know the same that same big leap forward this year and so he's taking this off season as a chance to you know set the tone for what this spring and the summer and the, the fall eventually when we get there uh, what it's going to look like yeah now this year we're in phase two of our pass rush um progression i guess and um he just wants to see more improvement more um attention to detail and more of like um knowing the situations a lot more any of the way you win in the rush is going to be different than the way Ja wins. When you've been working with Winston here in the offseason, how are you trying to take your pass rush to that next level in your final year? Yeah, um, you know, I don't really believe in the saying, like, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I don't like to call myself an old dog because I feel young. But in the <laughs> words of, or in the world of college football, I'm getting old. So um, it's being able to pick up, you know, some of the things that he's teaching these new guys. Um, like Carter Menz and, and Theron and being able to go out and apply those to my pass rush because, you know, uh, as a coach, he's still, you know, Coach Debo still learns too, so he's learning new things every year, and it's maybe different than what I learned my freshman year on how to, you know, say flip my hips or use my hands. And so being able to pick up new things that he's teaching them and apply it to uh, what I already know and um, my pass rush development um, and then being able to learn from, you know, guys like Ja, guys like Anthony, um, like they all have different skill sets, uh, seeing what they do really well and how they do it, and then uh, adding that to my pass rush, you know, profile. Danny, for, you know, Danny, you won't know until you're on the field with Corey, but what are some of the first impressions on what he's going to be like as a coordinator? I like him a lot. Um, if you'd asked me when I was, when I first got here, if I would have liked to have the same coordinator throughout my time, I probably would have told you yes. But, you know, being an older guy on the team now, I, I kind of see the benefits of, you know, getting new coaches in. Um, obviously, we've had new D-line coaches, but never a new coordinator on our, on our side of the ball. So um, having him in has just brought a whole new mindset. Um, uh, he's He's got a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I love the way he coaches. Um, I love his mindset uh, when it comes to uh, how to play defense and, you know, how to be around the ball and how to be physical and violent. So. Um, so far, I, I love um, sitting down and talking with him, sitting down and watching film with him. Um, I love just how he, he goes about the game and how he goes about the defense. Danny, can you give some examples of what you were just saying, talking about um, you know how he goes about things and some, some a little bit drill down a little bit? Specific, yeah, you know, it's you it's kind of, it's his intentionality with you know the things that we do. So. Um, like say we're in a walkthrough, you know, it's he understands that, you know, coming into a new defense, coming in year one of a coordinator, um, you know, not everything's going to be perfect. It's more like hey, we always talk about the how around here. Um, it's how we're doing something. Um, and he has certain things that he wants to see uh, from us when we go out there. Uh, he know, we know everything's not going to be perfect, especially when we're, you know, in the winter. Winter especially, moving to spring ball, but two, having a new coordinator, you know, it's tough on – everybody kind of feeling each other out, seeing what we're going to get. So it's his intentionality with the way he teaches, the way, you know, he learns from us, you know, what we know, and then how we apply it onto the field, into the workouts, into the film room. Um, just kind of, yeah. Ethan, what has stood out to you about the cornerback room so far that you've been able to notice over the winter workouts? And mm -hmm. 
Um, just like the gel and the glue to the room, um, everybody is, is together. Um, everybody's supporting each other. Everybody's pushing each other to get better. Um, and I feel like personally that's, that's just the way I personally uh, get better the best, and I feel like that's just the way that um, – it's going to help and benefit the whole room. Um, just competing with each other uh, each and every day, as well as just uh, learning off of each other and learning from each other, similar to what uh, Danny was saying about with their pass rush moves. So just different techniques that Coach Monroe may be teaching to one guy um, to help him out, just listening, overhearing that, and then interacting with them. And um, you know, just learn from each other and competing with each other. Um, it's a real well-knit uh, room, and we're real glued together. Joe, you won't be sneaking up on any opposing offensive coordinators and offensive lines this year. So when you look at knowing you're probably going to be the number one guy, people are going to be wanting to stop on passing downs. What are you working on this offseason to try and combat that? Um, yeah, I feel like it's a lot more. Um, I feel like it's more game plan. That's more um, getting me open. Um, a lot more spots on the defensive line. Um, obviously, we have guys like Danny. Anthony and all them to like help me out, I guess. And um, so, yeah. Ethan, like a unique kind of committing immediately after the, the visit here in Minnesota. And Coach Fleck shared the story about like, I think it was your, your mom telling you you had to cancel all your other visits afterwards. What was that situation like for you and how did you know it was the one? Um, I mean, it was my dad, but oh, yeah. Stop. You're good. Um, it was. It's a true story. Um, I mean, that's just my dad. You know, um, that's one of his values. Uh, commitments aren't to be taken lightly. Like, if you're going to commit to something, you're going to be 100. percent And it was more so from the um, from the standpoint of like, if this is what you're going to do and this is what you're serious, it's not something we're just going to throw around. Like, we're going to show that we're serious about this. So um, that's how my dad it, it is as a man. That's how he is as a person. So I wasn't surprised or thrown off by it at all. So it was something that was pretty uh, routine for me. Um, I think it, coach, it caught Coach Fleck off guard a little bit. Um, but, yeah, that's a true story. I mean, it's just my dad being my dad. For Danny and John, we saw Anthony Smith get his feet wet last year, played 300-plus snaps with you guys. What do you think expectations should be like for him going into the, the spring and fall? I feel like the expectations for him is just being more confident and being more just free and stop looking at, like, coach for like a call or something if he's doing something right I feel like he just needs to be free and just needs to be just to go um he played a lot of football here now and um I feel like um he's gonna do that this um this season and then um so yeah yeah I feel like his his expectations are for himself are way higher than you know than coach Debo's are or coach Flex are or any of us are for himself um but yeah it's it's confidence he's you know he's a a big presence on the field when he's out there um, it's just like he, he said, just being confident, not like having to look back and, oh, is this right or is this wrong? Like, just go out there and play. Like, if he, if he, the second he cuts it loose, and we saw it last year, and he does that consistently, it's, it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Danny and Ja, what's, what's life going to be like without Kyler and who's going to be in that spot? Do you think? It's sad. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. That's a big, that was a big leader in our group. Yeah. Um, he, he said everything, and um, this person I leaned on. So I feel like, um, just his presence is just gonna uh, just be felt. Yeah, and, and it was good to see you know KB and and Chris that pro day and them go out there and put their stuff on. Um, but yeah, it's been those were we we're really close with those two guys, so it's it's a little different not having them in the room. But you know, it, it in turn brings the room closer together, um, opens up room for other guys to step up and lead. So, John, how have you grown and evolved as a leader over the years now as you've you're, you're kind of accelerating up into an even bigger leadership role this year. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because um, I always look back and people are just like, like guys like Anthony just looking up to me and like um, I always look at the big O, so it was kind of just crazy. But I think um, just being more of the teacher and um, more of the, um, I'm not more of a vocal guy, but uh, I'm more like lead by example. So um, just like telling, just like, like um, giving just like little mental things to like the, um, the, um, Younger guys and stuff like that. What are some of the things Big O's taught you that you've carried forward today? <clears throat> I think his biggest thing was just confidence. I think I came in at like two, like fifteen and stuff like that. So he just instilled confidence in me because he came in the same thing. So um, just instill confidence. Like that's why I tell Carter all the time. Just like stay the, just stay the road. Just like just keep eating, keep um, just working on your, like your passers moves like by yourself. Because that's what I did. And because um, that's what Big O told me, um, and obviously like um, Boye told me the same thing. Um, so yeah, it's just a process. And um, so yeah. 
Ethan, what's it been like to develop a relationship with Justin Wally? He's been a long time starter here. You've obviously been a long time starter, Puck now. Is it something to be said when having two veteran guys there starting on the outside? Um, I think so. Um, I, I mean, as you can see with these two guys, just being a vet, um, it, it carries a certain weight um, just in terms of leadership and in terms of what's expected in production on the field. Um, but it also just brings a sense of a calming, I would say, for myself, just going into games. Like, I'm, I'm not really, like, that freshman out there that's kind of nervous, like, to make a mistake or anything. Like, the confidence that they're trying to teach the young guys in their room is something I feel like is common with a veteran presence. Um, and then just interact, interacting with Wally, like, he's a great dude, great guy, obviously, heck of a player. Um, just picking up tidbits from him on what he sees when he plays certain teams and things like that, just tendencies that I can start working on now. Um, rather than wait till uh, the season approaches. Like, we have 15 opportunities coming up this spring, starting tomorrow. So I get to start implementing some of those things that I've been uh, listening to him talk about and discuss with me starting tomorrow. So it's been great. It's been exciting, and I'm looking forward to it. Danny, have you thought about all, at all about the, the, the expanded Big Ten and no divisions this year, what that's going to be like playing in that? Uh, not necessarily. Um, just that there's more opportunities um, to play different teams. I think we talked about it the other day, like if um, you ever thought as a kid you'd be playing in the Big Ten and then going to play UCLA and USC and, you know, down the road having the opportunity to play you know, Oregon and Washington, uh, you would have said no. <laughs> um, but it's a, an awesome opportunity, one, to be able to go out there um, and we're playing the Rose Bowl this year in the Rose Bowl Stadium, so that, that's an awesome opportunity. And then to be able to play teams like that during the regular season, um, it's it's awesome. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Uh, it's a, it's not necessarily a different brand of football, but it's a little bit of a different style of football than you know getting out of the Big Ten West, where everyone kind of knows the style of football in the Big Ten West. So um, it's going to be exciting this year. Uh, one or two more for John Danny. Do you think sacks are an overrated stat? I think it is. I think it's more of a um, a pressure. You got you got to be able to affect the quarterback. That's what we always talk about in yeah. the room. Always affect the quarterback. And always. Um, just create havoc in that backfield. Yeah, I would say the the stat, the sack stat alone, I would say is an overrated stat. But if you go and look, like you said, we always look at affecting the, the quarterback. You know, maybe you don't even get a, a QB hurry or a QB pressure or a QB hit. You could see whether or not a guy affects the, the quarterback on a play, regardless of the stat. Um, so I would say to a degree, yeah. One final question. Everyone all set? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.